Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another small transparent watercolor. This time it's a 7 by 10 inch painting of a Viri. I got photos of this guy in, in northern Ohio at uh, Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge and thought it would make a, a fun watercolor. I started on dry paper with a wash of several different uh, premixed greens and uh, orangey brown kind of colors. Um, I used a one inch flat brush. I like using that for a lot of the backgrounds um, because I can use it, uh, you know, the flat side and get a large area covered pretty quickly and then if I need I can turn that brush on its side and get into some of those little tiny cracks between the branches pretty well. Once I had the main background colors in I wanted to start roughing in where some of the uh, the foliage is going to be in the in the background. And uh, long term, I knew that the bird had a white belly and a white throat, pretty much white in some modeling. And so I wanted to have some of the darker tones in those areas to boost the contrast and draw your eye to those areas. The uh, advantage of the working with the frisket like you see here is that I can paint right over it. The disadvantage is that uh, when I peel the frisket off I'm going to have that stark white so I really have to plan where those darks are going to be relative to what colors will eventually be on the paper. Um, so you kind of have to think ahead if you're using frisket as to how the whole thing will play out. Usually my goal at this point is to try to cover as much of the paper as possible. That way you're, you're kind of building all the values and tones at once and you're not going to have as many surprises. And some people like leaving a lot of white on the paper and I find that that for me is a uh, kind of catastrophic way to work. I definitely have better uh, control and harmonies and things work better together if I uh, cover as much of that paper as possible early on. see a little on the left my photo reference it had a, a lot of dappled sunlight and uh, I wanted to change it from that when I did the painting I, I thought it would be a stronger piece if I could push some of those tones back further and have it darker and uh, have the bird pop out a little bit more as opposed to the dappled light the photo had some disadvantages so you can see here that now I'm kind of darkening the areas behind the bird more and trying to build a little bit better depth and uh, as I did this, I tried to control the focus, leaving some portions in the upper left-hand corner kind of going soft, and other areas I want to have really crisp and sharp-edged. And that, that often can make for an interesting uh, comparison with some of those lost edges and some sharp edges. Looks like here I'm using a, a number four brush for that. I decided to green it up a lot in the background in that last pass with the wash. Um, and a lot of that was because I thought it would play well with the, uh, the, the kind of warm tones of the Viri later. Um, although you, it's just the frisket now, you can't really see it. Uh, long term, that should uh, give a good uh, contrast to those warm tones with those cool, cool greens in the background. At this point I was kind of picking out and painting little edges to the uh, leaf litter and twigs and things in the background. And lots of layers end up making that look fairly convincing, but there's really no shortcut but just lots of layers. And here again I really darkened up those areas around the bird because I wanted to push those back further and control some of the contrast to really draw your eye to that area long term. Right now we're looking at the frisket color. so got to kind of imagine those warm tones of the viri and the white belly um, on there. And so now I'm peeling off the frisket and revealing a magnificently white bird and branch, which does not look so great, but I transferred the sketch and now I'll start covering as much of that paper as quickly as possible. And aha, here we have the warm tones of the viri coming in. And this should play nicely with those um, cooler greens in the background. So and you can see
Definitely trying to cover as much of the paper as possible. I'm leaving some of those whites on the belly, but that's okay. They're going to be light tones. And I, you can see there I, I dropped in some of those shadows under the wing, and I'll probably bring in some of the belly shadows soon. Yep, there you go. And that will uh, that'll at least rough in the main colors, so I, I won't have as many surprises later. Looks like I've switched to a number two round brush for a lot of this little detail work. And on the right hand side you can see the from my palette that I've got a lot of a lot of light glazes that I'm putting on top of these. I'm not working very opaquely with the paint. And again you can see the photo reference on the left that the very have a lot of subtleties to the color. Some parts of her almost olive color and some are kind of cinnamony aspects to it. In the end it kind of reads as just kind of a nice warm brown, but when you actually go to paint them there's a lot to it. the glove. I, I, when I was in art school, I uh, doing a lot of illustrations. Um, we had courses through the summer and it was never air conditioned in those areas. <laughs> and uh, if you were doing watercolors, you, sometimes the your hand would smudge the areas of the watercolor you were working on. So I got in the habit of doing my all my watercolors with a cotton glove on and I'd cut the fingers off and then I'd be able to uh, not worry about transferring any of that uh, paint if it was kind of uh, thick. And it definitely keeps the painting a lot cleaner if you wear a cotton glove on that hand. So now you can see we're starting to build some detail. Late in the painting, I, I kind of started pushing the colors of the foreground definitely far from the photo reference that I had taken. And I wanted to bring in a lot of kind of saturated colors to the shadow areas, which would be much more interesting than the, the actual branch that the bird was sitting on. So I kind of got a little bit crazy with the purples and blues in the shadow. And um, I may have thrown away a little bit of the uh, strict realism, but I think it made for a stronger painting having some uh, pretty colors and areas to look at. Here I switched to a 10 odd brush for doing the tiny little details of the nose and the beak. And the feet. Can't forget the feet. Um, feet are always an often neglected portion of painting, so I usually try to really get lots of good detail and crisp, crisp little lines in there. So the feet are always fun to work on. pretty close to finishing up at this point. Really trying to hop around the painting and, and look for little areas that need to be sharpened up with darks. And uh, really I'm crisping up lines and looking for little areas that need to be um, super sharpened and doing that with uh, the brush and trying to pick up the little, little lines that will in the end make it look really, really finely detailed. those last final details and it, it, it this is a part of the painting that takes a surprising amount of time throwing in the initial washes goes really quickly and then you get to this part and it's just you're you keep finding more and more little places that need attention and tiny little details that you need to pick up um, it's a fun part but it's hard to know sometimes when you're finished
So there you go. It's pretty much time for a signature and then uh, a couple of last details. And there you go. That's the finished painting. If you have a chance, uh, visit the blog and the website to find out more information on this and other paintings. Thanks for watching.